Ladies and gentlemen, got a little bit of music, and he's got some stones singing with them, okay, as an Angie stone. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at what's in front of you. United States District Court for the Central District of California. California! What did they do? They confirmed an award. Now, this was not just any award. This is an award from a court who did conduct an arbitration overseas. Okay. However, please understand. Notice what it said in a summary judgment. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand. There is one thing that you guys are not doing because you were unaware of it. And it definitely is my job to bring it to your attention. Give me a second because I have a FedEx driver who is here dropping off some materials and I'll be right back. How you doing, sir? All right, doing okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it will be just one second. Ben waiting on him to deliver this it is a cell phone because i am sending a phone back to michigan because it doesn't get the greatest signal out here and we have somebody who helped get the phone whose phone itself is not doing all that great so he will end up getting that phone and i will be using this phone which shall be getting a better signal than I haven't been getting lately. Okay, enough said. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move forward. Ladies and gentlemen, I tried to tell every last one of you, every last one of you, every last one of you, that you needed to do a motion for summary disposition. So pay attention. Smudging filed a motion for summary judgment seeking to confirm the LCIA award. These are two heavy hitting companies. Guess what this court did? How dare they sit up here and issue an award for an exorbitant amount? What's the amount? Oh, you won't believe it. Where's that amount at? That, that $84 million. Oh, I don't see it. Maybe it's here in front of me and I don't notice it, but the award was for $84 million. Okay, that's how much the, what is that, LCIA? That's how much they awarded the individual. I don't know why I can't see the number. Oh, there it is right there. Woo, looking right past it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, $84 million. It would have been more, but they could only do it for one year because that was the way the contract was worded. The contract specific, uh, excuse me, specifically specified one year and how much the interest rates were and so forth. That was the contract. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all of you who are doing your motions to confirm, you're doing them correctly, but the there's a problem. Okay. There is a problem. What's the problem, sir? Sounds like you have a problem. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is a huge problem. And that problem is this. You're doing the right thing. It's just they changed the rules on you. You didn't know. You see, he asked for summary judgment. The reason why I'm bringing this up because I have a gentleman whom the court converted his request for arbitration award. And when they converted his request to an arbitration award, they converted it to a civil action. He didn't ask for a civil action. He didn't even come close to asking for a civil action. He didn't come close to filing a lawsuit, but they converted it to a lawsuit. Ladies and gentlemen, how horrible. 
and I really do say this with emphasis, how horrible, because he has an incarceration contract. Okay? This is what they do. So the way to get around an incarceration contract or any other contract where the courts take your motion to confirm and convert it to a civil lawsuit or convert it to anything else, before any parties respond, before any parties are served, all you have to do is ask for an amended, do an amended complaint. Before they file an answer, you do an amended complaint and you put it right back into summary judgment. Summary judgments are $47, not $400. If you had a arbitration that you put to the court and they tried to charge you $400 or $500 to file that arbitration award, you simply have to go back into the court and let them know that it was a summary proceeding. Hold on, let's make sure we can, that's case text. No, we don't want case text right now. Okay, summary proceedings, rules of procedure. Okay, we need, not California, we need federal district court. I think it's rule 56, if I'm not mistaken. Rule 56, there it is right there, okay? Rule 56 of the federal rules of procedure. That's how that's taken care of. Now, we don't care about rule 33 and derogatories. We have declaratory judgment and summary judgment. Rule 56 and rule 57. Do it under summary judgment if it's me. If it's you, you do whatever you want to do because y'all don't listen to me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to a close. The last one was a little bit longer than this. This one won't be as long, but I do want to thank all of you and want to say I hope everything goes continually well with all of you. I hope this information proves to be extremely beneficial because I know it will prove beneficial for me. By the way, we'll be placing this motion up online. This is a motion to confirm where the court it appears they granted this motion to confirm. I don't know, I haven't read it. I just know that I thought it was important enough for me to download it. And so the first thing I did was downloaded it. And so what you, the delay here was pulling it up. This is a case from 2007. And this is in the Northern District of Texas, Dallas, Texas. Let's go to the end of it and see what they decided. Okay, conclusion. For the reasons herein stated, the court strikes his voluntary dismissal, and this notice is hereby rendered null and void and shall have no effect on his application to confirm arbitration. They grant his motion to confirm arbitration award and therefore confirm the arbitration award for uh, $1,364,405. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if they were challenging the arbitration award. He has a right to voluntarily dismiss his challenge and they ignored it, but the court grants the award and this uh, judge goes ahead. Now, the reason why you want this type of order because it states the reason why he did that. And you want those reasons. You wanna be able to use the reasons to the best of your uh, that your case acquires. Thus, to show that a tender is conditioned upon release and satisfaction of a disputed claim, a party must establish an attempt to reach an agreement and a meeting of the minds. Tender a payment. And the reason why you have 2004 is because people were doing all the A for Bs. So that's why that's there. Now, under Texas law, an accord and satisfaction rests on a contract expressed or implied in which the parties agree to discharge the existing obligation by means of a lesser payment of tendered or acceptance and acceptance. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see how he relies on cases? But he says under Texas law, what law is he referring to? He doesn't mention the law. He just quotes from another case, quotes from another judge. Shame on him for not quoting the law. Under Texas law, this is what judges do. They don't tell you what law they're relying on. They just say under Texas law. Well, what's the law in Texas? Hmm? There's a district court. He's supposed to be stating what that law is, but he doesn't. So we'll be putting this up. It probably won't be up today, but it will be up in the uh, document. And I, 
right now the name of it is not uh oh i put motion to confirm an arbitration award ruling that's what i titled it as because the other number that it gave wasn't uh, accurate but what i'll do is austin powers incorporated uh all awesome whatever uh is it alston but i believe it's austin power incorporated what i'll do is i'll probably call it that when i save it and that way you can look for it under that okay other than that it'll be motion to confirm award ruling and it'll probably be austin Powell incorporated ruling ladies and gentlemen i hope everything goes well with you have a good day have a good night have a goodbye have a good adios 10 minutes gotta go gotta go gotta go